Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to the face, the card making space, and we are live. So, for those not aware when it comes to lives, this is in fact live. If you're watching this after Sunday, April, what's today, the 14th, it's just a replay. Not my usual videos. Just hence the disclaimers, because, you know, people are like, I, I miss your regular videos. I'm like, dude, I upload regular videos all the time. <laughs> we do lives once a week for sure. Sundays we go live, 2 p.m. Central. The rest of the time I will do random little lives like I did earlier this week when I did a haul video. Thank you guys for, for tuning in for that one. That was that was fun. I do plan to continue doing haul videos on occasion. Just stay tuned. So hello to everybody. I got the intro to work this time. We're doing good. We're doing good. Yep. Let's just, let's hope again that we uh, can continue on this like decent trajectory of dealing with my ridiculous tech issues. <laughs> uh, well, hello, and I'm glad. I'm very glad you're enjoying them. So yes, hello to all the peoples. Today, the plan is to do just one card. Kind of hoping this won't be a ridiculously long live. I know a lot of you guys don't mind them, but, and I don't mind doing them. I just, I am tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I have other things I need to get done, deadlines, you know, all the fun stuff. So, yeah, we're here. We're live. Um, like always, links to all the things that I'm planning are in the description box below. There's a link to the visual supply list. That's also linked in the live this way live chat and then throughout the live if i do grab other things the unpaid intern sitting in the corner will link to it and then i'll edit it afterwards so we'll just see we'll see what happens because yeah I, I have an idea in my head everything's kind of all planned out everything's linked but you never you never know you never know what's gonna happen yay jen's here hello 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 um I missed the live haul, but I watched replay, so I enjoyed it. Oh, I'm glad. Hauls are fun. I genuinely, like, I love haul videos, you know, because it just, that's always the thing. And it was funny. I forget who, I think it was, like, Yana Smakula has posted a couple hauls more recently, and she had shown a couple products, and I was like, oh, one, hadn't even seen them before, and two, it's always different, you know, seeing it in real life, that sort of a thing. And then someone else had posted, and I don't even remember, and they showed a product that I have been planning to purchase and it was interesting actually seeing it and I was like oh that doesn't look at all like I thought it was gonna so all videos are fun I will keep doing them again I used to do them all the time and then it just got to be ridiculous but yeah anywho okay everything everything's working let's let's oh, oh, oh. We're, we're doing good we're doing good we're gonna use a 3d embossing folder we're gonna do some painting with distressed watercolor pencils, which sort of disclaimer, just because if for those that maybe don't watch all my videos, I have it linked in the description box below. I have a playlist of all the videos I've done using the distress watercolor pencils. So that is linked. And the very first video in that playlist, or one of the first ones, is showing how I took the pencils and made a palette I don't take credit for this idea. This was not my idea. I think it was Sharon might have been the first one, one of Tim Holtz makers, but several people, you know, did different versions of palettes, etc. So I don't take credit for that because it was not my idea. I never would have thought of it. But this is how I like to use them. And I'm just explaining this because I get asked a lot. How did you do this? Where did you get this, etc.? The whole video is there. Is there? It's in the playlist. It explains it because this is how I prefer to use them. This is the original set, because there's three of these. There's three tins originally. These are the, the original. The new ones that were released, I talked about them in a different live. I showed them. I haven't even done the palette yet still. I haven't had time. It is time consuming to do this, but I love it. And I'm going to do it. I just, like I said, I'm tired, man. I don't know what time the day. Uh, and then the other thing also, I just thought I would like, I wanted to show this because I love it. This just came out yesterday. This is from Pick a Pen Studios. I did link to it. It's the Rainbow Trivet. It's like silicone, food safe, all the good things. And it's grippy. So you can stick like your ink pads on it, whatever. I'm going to keep mine kind of off to the side a little bit. I use it to set my, my embossing tool 
on so it's not sliding around. So, love it. You can put that in a chat, you know. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought that was really cute. Isn't that cute? I love it. I love it. So, now I'm going to put it where I planned on putting it over here. So, I can hold on to my thing. There we go. So, now my, my little heat tool has a, a spot. It has a spot. Okay. So, isn't it adorable? I know. I love it. Anyway. Okay, let's close that up. I'm gonna get to that in a second. I have, like I said, I have plants. We'll we'll get to all the things. First off, oldie but goodie. I pulled out the um this is the oldie but goodie. This is the friendship text. Is that what it's called? Yeah, friendship text background stamp. So I pulled that out. This is just gonna give me some texture on my background as as we do. So, and then Nina. Desert Storm um, cardstock, my one of my favorite craft cardstocks, and then I think for the card front I'm gonna use. Actually, I'm gonna do the inside first. I know I'm all over the place, but Method to the Madness. So here's my card base. My card base, just white cardstock, post-it tape at the score line, and then my light ink, which is. Just Simon's Cappuccino. This one, Latte. Cappuccino I'm going to use on the front. And you can always use your stamp in your Misty stamp wheel, whatever works for you. This is how I've been using background stamps for 20 years. And more often than not, this is how I prefer it. Let me set so inked up. We're going to stamp it onto what will be the inside of my card just to give it a little something something there we go and we'll set the side I'll come back to this later so that part's done and then I don't even need to clean it off because I'm going to a darker shade of ink I'm going to use cappuccino this time so just a little bit darker and I'm going to stamp this onto the Nina Desert Storm, because that will give just some some good some good texture to my background before I run it through with the embossing folder I want to use. Just like so. Yes. That's that. Um Hello to everybody. Yeah, that rainbow trivet's adorable. I'm gonna probably order more of them. <laughs> I was like, ooh, this would be cute to have on my little nail desk where I paint my nails, you know, because like not to have like I like things like that for setting drinks on too. Yeah. So that <laughs> yes, I'll probably in fact I can get you one. You need one for your desk too. So yeah. you have a designated spot to put your drink. I do that. I keep like different little turret, like to keep like my drink goes over here away from the elbows. So, and you can't go wrong with rainbow. So obviously I'm a huge fan. So yeah, I'm going to have to get more of them because I, I was super excited when I got it in the package and I'm like, mm, need more, need more. They just have these Simon Kick stamp paws. Yeah, I've got the Simon Paw, the, the, the Paw ones. I have a whole stack of those, too, and those are super cute. I have them all over the place. Yeah. I like them. Okay. And they're really good. They are. Anything grippy. Yes. You know? In fact, for those that have here, I'll show again. So, I don't have a link to the Simon ones. You can... Uh, I have it in my link deli. If you paw, type in P-E-T space positively... And then hit enter. I think I have yeah, that very first one. Yes, yeah. there we go. Um I show them. I show them to you guys. Oh. Cause yeah, these come in a whole bunch of different colors. And I have so the unpaid internal link. Same concept, you know, good silicone, grippy. These have um 
purposely one side has like these, you know, it's got their branding and stuff. But the point with this was so that you could take your brushes. I'll show. Here we go. So like if you're in the sink and you're cleaning brushes, things like that is, you know, you put a bit of soap and then they're really good for that. I like that sort of a thing. And then, yeah, I use them to hold my ink pads, to put my drink on. I got one off to the side. We have them all over the place. I've got one over there for the unpaid intern. Yep. Yep. So, and they come in, there's a whole rainbow of colors of these. So they're about roughly, roughly the same size. So if you have these, that'll give you an idea what this little guy. So it's cool. I love them. They're, they're bright and colorful and fun and I like them. So do I need more? Pretty much. Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I'm going to get more of them because they're just, they're cute. You can't go wrong with rainbow. Okay. So we got our background. Um, I have two of them on desk at work for my coffee cups. Exactly. Like I, I have them all over the place in the house and now the rainbow ones, I'm like, I need those. So we're going to use the, uh, Lily of the Valley arch embossing folder, 3d, 3d embossing folder. And with these ones, I know I need, I think it's just one cutting plate. I now have to remind myself exactly what my sandwich is. Cause I have, I've been showing that to you guys in videos. Where's my, there it is. Um, yeah, just one cutting plate on that one. Hawk hay. Oh, yes. And yes, that is, they are good for that. Kath is 100% right. If you've got a jar that's being stubborn, because these are very, very bendable, you know, you can literally, to give you that grip. It's another reason why I actually need to put more of these like in our kitchen and stuff. Because yes, 100%, they come in so handy if you've got a stubborn jar, because that grippy works like a charm. So, okay. Um, and then, okay, isn't, yeah, and the rainbow one's cute. Okay, so, embossing folder with the Simon ones for the specific the Empress. I have shown in the past my sandwich folder in past videos with the Platinum 6. And then I'm pretty sure with Simon's and Boss Folders, they do list other sandwich options. That said, you always got to test, you know, what might work or not work in your own machine. But this is what works for me. I just hit my microphone. Good job, Amy. Okay. Oh, and you can link to the rainbow trivet in the chat as well. I did have, uh, it's, it's in the supplies. Yeah. Okay. So we do that. And then, so I stamped on that side. We're going to. Spray the back just lightly with just a little bit of water. That just helps soften the paper fibers so that they'll emboss nicely or nicer. And then we'll line this up because I am planning on trimming this down. I purposely cut this panel larger than I normally do. So right now it's about four and a half by five and three quarter roughly you know do that i could probably zhuzh this up a little bit more there let's get that lined up how i want and then one cutting plate and run this through my empress And then I've got that. So which at the moment doesn't look like much, but that's why we got the Distress watercolor pencils, which I did post in the description box below for the month of April um, through Simon Says Stamp. The Distress watercolor pencils are, you can get 20% off. I posted the code and the link and all the things. 
doesn't matter there any of the distress I, I linked I post a link under the video you can even use that one that one and that links to, links to all of them so what I'm gonna do I need this I don't need this I need this and then I need to zoom in and yeah right now it's not gonna look like much it, it's gonna look kind of boring but we're gonna make it we're gonna make it look pretty so what we're gonna do I think we'll start with the greenery and I'm just gonna be choosing greenery at random I did not I've never labeled any of these I do know that's twisted citron that's rustic wilderness this one potentially mold lawn it's either mold lawn or peeled paint anyway I'm just gonna be like pulling from these and I just use my little Tim Holtz water brush the detail one same one I've literally literally the same one I have been using for I don't know close to a decade and all I do with these is swirl my brush my wet little water brush and then I start to paint and because these are so um, pigmented they show up really nicely on darker cardstock and one of my favorites of course is Nina Desert Storm or if I'm really wanting to get um, mucky inky etc I'll use distress craft heavy stock but I don't use that very often, especially with embossing folders, because Craft Heavy Stock is really, really heavyweight, and it's a little bit more um, iffy <laughs> running it through with an embossing folder. Hence me just grabbing the Nina Desert Storm. So while it's, and this is also why I kind of hold it, because even for me to be able to see what I'm doing, um, because you're just following those raised edges, which you would think it's more difficult, you know, because it's kind of that no line concept. However, I find this actually to be one sort of therapeutic, and two, I find this actually less intimidating than doing actual no line which is odd in a sense because there's literally no lines you're just kind of following raised edges on this but it's fun so yeah anywho um yes i missed what what did i miss oh yeah will there be splatters well if you check the supply list <laughs> there there might are i might have already linked to uh yes like three different kinds of splatter, which most likely all three will end up on this card. You never know, you never know what I might do. Like, yeah. Weird little thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know, right? I still need to, like, play with that, those ridiculously enormous tubes of gouache I got that I showed in the haul video, but I'll get around to that. I'm not planning on using it today. Who knows? Maybe we will. We'll see. I'll do the painting first, and then we'll figure out the splatter situation. So yeah, just going along, filling everything in. It gets a little bit finicky um, when you're doing the little, the little stems of these. Lily of the Valley. Hence me only doing one card today because I just I had a feeling that this will get a teensy bit fiddly. But not much. I don't really consider this super difficult. It's just hard to like do it on camera, doing this live, and then also talking at the same time. I can multitask, but this is 
This is pushing it. Just, just a smidge, you know? But yeah. I really wanted to do it. It's pretty. We're just gonna... Just gonna paint it. Try like so. And then like that. So yeah, once you start adding the color, you know, it starts. It'll, and it'll look better once I actually get like I'm gonna do a couple layers of the green. And then once I actually do the florals, as always, you gotta trust, you gotta trust the process, man. Um, can you use tap water or should you use distilled water in the water brush? You can use um, whatever you want. The only reason I recommend distilled water in specifically things like my water brush and my spray bottles the only reason i recommend distilled water is because it's it's sitting for a long period of time and distilled water doesn't have greeblies in it again not it's not the end of the world but i've shown that in other lives um it will if you're using just tap water over time it starts to go funky colors like one of my spray bottles is now permanently yellow. So again, it works fine. It, the water in it isn't gross or anything, but it's just what happens. So I just put, I do put distilled water in here just because it sits. I don't, I'm not emptying it out and it's just better. But like in my big jar that I've shown that again, I keep off to the side away from my elbows. I have a big mason jar that I use for like watercolor to rinse off my brushes, etc., etc. That I just use tap water because that thing gets dumped out, um, like every couple of days, basically, because I'm I use it so much. Like already, mine. That's my watercolor jar right now. Like just, it's gross. And you also keep it off the side so you don't drink from it accidentally, because you know that would suck. Oh, there's my swatch stamp set. I'm wondering where that went. Stuck to the side of the jar for some reason. Anyway, um. So yeah, for that, and so then, like, when I'm doing, like, actual watercolor, this is watercolor too, but you know what I mean, like, with a normal, just a regular watercolor brush, I use tap water, you know, because the water evaporates on the, the project, it's irrelevant. But if it's going to sit for a long time, I recommend getting, getting a jug of distilled water. So yeah. Um, hello, Jessica. Talking about sides since life got in the way. My design team stuff is due tomorrow. Don't do as I do. Ha! I do that all the time. Like, I'm not joking. Every time I say, like, I would like more hours in the day, I kind of joke when I say it, but I'm, like, dead serious. And the unpaid intern knows full well. Oh, yeah. You're, like, like a university student that turns in an essay at the last minute. Oh, I turn everything in the last minute. One, I'm just, I am the queen of procrastination. And two, I, I'm, I actively try. Like, some of the people that work with me are very well aware. I'm like, I'm trying really hard to get ahead, be on time. All I'm trying. I'm trying actively every day. And there's, it, there's always something. There's always something stupid. Like, Things always break. Things always go wrong. Life always interrupts. And it's like, I've tried and tried and tried. <laughs> uh, although I'm finding more and more in this industry. I have so many people because I've always felt really guilty about how last minute I am with everything. That's actually kind of the norm in this industry. There is a lot of makers that are just either big procrastinators as well. Or, you know, they're in the same boat where it's just, it's just chaos. Everything is chaos. Mm -hmm. so yeah we're, we're all in the same boat now i know i might distress sprayer is green yep they turn they turn funky colors after a while again i don't know where mine went i have that one bottle around here somewhere that i've just kept to uh, as an example because yeah my bottles um these ones i have had 
for many years now, many, many years. And I've only, these ones I've only kept distilled water in. So you can see, like, they're clear as day. I have another old distress sprayer that's old. Old, old, old. And that one I originally used just tap water in. And it, it takes a while, but it's, the bottle is now yellow. And it works fine. It's fine. It literally is fine. I don't care. But that's it. That, that's it. That's all it does. So. Okay. Um, okay. So. I've got kind of my first layer. You know. And now I'm going to add more depth. So I'm going to go in with my darker green, which is the, the Fabulous Rustic Wilderness. And... I'll just like mix right on my palette too. That is one of the things I really like doing with these is just mucking around. There we go. Now we can start going in and adding. And now I'm gonna help tab my hand balanced against my Against my desktop, so now you guys aren't really gonna see my face because I gotta get my face down to see what I'm doing. <laughs> Not like you really need to see my face anyway. I craft this microscope. Yep. Um. Yeah, that's what like be that's why it became a thing. The whole like welcome to my face and my card making space because when I started doing like face forward intros and stuff and like people were were. And they were nice comments. There was no bad ones. Um, actually, no, there was one person. <laughs> I'll get to that. Um, about, like, it was so, how nice it was to see my face a lot. And it just became a thing. Like, welcome to my face. Like, here's my face again. Anyway, I just, I don't generally care. But yeah, no, I had one person make a stupid comment. And it was, oh, something about they were, like, kind of hinting, like, you need to change your profile image to one that's, like, real. Because they were basically inferring that my old, like, my YouTube profile picture, as if I'd maybe yassified it or edited it, which it was like, no. It's just from many years ago. I was having a great makeup and hair day, took a selfie, and I used that as my profile picture. Do I want to change it? Not really. So, yeah. I, I found that funny. The comment didn't even, like, whatever they were trying to troll, I really don't care. I, I found it funny. Because I was like, um, yeah, that, that image is, it's me. It's just a, a younger, you know, little slightly more sophisticated version of me. Which doesn't really exist anymore. And I don't care. I don't care, man. Anyway, see? Adding, adding depth. Mixing up. The greens doing my thing. Gonna go in. Kind of darken. Darken some stuff. The thing to remember doing something like this. This is just Nina, you know, heavy or er, Nina Classic Crest, uh, Desert Storm, whatever. My brain is like stopping again. Um, this is not watercolor paper. This is not heavy stock. So you only have so much workability. Um, if you find that you're doing something like this on Desert Storm, just anything other than like watercolor or heavy stock, and it's starting to pill, like the and you'll know because it'll the when uh, when I talk about pilling, it's like the cardstock is starting to like pill. Literally, it's like rolling up. It's you're overworking it because it's not meant for heavy water techniques. I haven't had a problem, but like, this is about as far as I will go. You know, if I was to keep trying to add layers, trying to work it, adding more water, adding more water, it's just the fibers are literally starting to like break down. So yeah. And we all choose our best ways. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like any of that, like I, I don't, I, I genuinely don't really care what people think about my, my looks any of that kind of stuff. Um, I've been showing my face on screen for so many years. I, I just don't care. I don't care, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah. It just is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, we're going to keep adding 
to build up that color. And use that darker green for the stem so that it stands out even more. There we go. I'll just kind of keep working my way around here. Uh, the things that people latch on to, com to complain. Oh yeah, I I get all kinds, and yeah, it doesn't it 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 doesn't get under my skin. I I just I can't be bothered, honestly. And especially when it, those rare times when it's things like that, like people that feel the need to to try to complain or critique someone's like things you can't change like your looks <laughs> like who you are as a person it's like um yeah no but yeah some people be miserable and that's that's for them to live with i i don't i don't care i don't care anywho welcome to my face or in this case the top of my head and my car making space. I don't. I don't care. Like, you're just. Your hair cam is fine. The hair cam. There we go. Yeah. Whatever works. Could be worse. Could be a butt cam. That's what Kathy Z calls hers when she has to get up to. The butt cam. Grab things. Yeah. She always turns it off. Just turn off the butt cam. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, it's funny. She's not wearing pants. No, oh, she wears pants, but it's just <laughs> she doesn't wear. And she's talked about this, and it always I just howl. Like she doesn't wear a bra. Oh, you know. Well, and I and I don't blame. It's like got to be comfortable, man. I get it. I do because you know I just and I wouldn't have the grace to think ahead and like shut off the camera. I'd be getting up and just no. Breathe the tittles. <laughs> yeah, breathe the tittles. Uh. But yeah, so yeah, we call it. She calls it the butt cam now when she has to get up, and she 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 shuts it off, and I just I laugh every time. Gotta love a Kathy Z live. Her live streams are the best. I love it. She is, she is a good human. There we go. So I've added little little bits of detail. Nothing much. Literally, it's 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 like tracing, you know. Um. I need to practice painting on the embossed. Like, it is, and it's good. It is good practice, honestly. It's, and there's so many now. Like Simon's got like five bajillion <laughs> embossing, but like there's there's so many, and ones like this, you know, like this type of one. Back in the day, I would have never. I would have avoided ones because like, I was like, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to make this a card? Like, mm, mm, you know. But then things like this, I was like, oh, this is fun because I love the look of no line coloring a lot. You know, when you stamp an image with a really light ink and then you color it or paint it or whatever to make it look like the whole thing was kind of painted freehand and no line. But I don't do it very often because, like I said, I don't have the patience. But ones like this, I don't know what it is. I just, I really enjoy following these lines and painting it and... It is, it is technically fairly easy. And then the big one too to always remember, even if you're not super happy with the results, add a splatter. Splatter will fix it. It'll look great. It'll, it'll look great, you know, because splatter fixes everything. Yep. Yep. We are, we are a pro splatter household. <laughs> Very. You should see our kitchen counters. <laughs> kitchen counters, the blinds on the kitchen window. <laughs> cupboards very pro splatter oh yeah especially when it's like pasta sauce <laughs> that's like anything you, that you, kicks on real nice uh, you would think that it would be me in the kitchen with the pasta sauce after all that's done but no nope it's the intern yeah. i guess that's his his contribution to crafting in this household Splattering the kitchen. Splattering the kitchen. Never not colorful. Yeah. Truth. Truth. Okay. So we're just going to keep. 
add in some green here and it's just it's the difference just like adding one more layer you know how big of a difference it makes and that kind of generally applies to any type of um, coloring in that sense it just gives everything more depth. I gotta add more. I already used up my little pile here of um, green that I had made. So we'll just add a bit more. And it gets a little darker, just like so. There we go. And there, there we go. And then off to the side, I just have a cloth that I swirl my um, I swirl my brush in to kind of, if there's too much color or if there's too much water. There we go. And there's actually a little like fold in this leaf. So we'll do that. And we'll add some of the darker there we go nice still on camera okay but I'm still on camera but I'm doing the but I'm doing the things and then I'm coloring these things in that little area just because and then paint this stem with the darker green so that it stands out a bit and then add that little bit here and there to the rest of the stem And there's little like little buds or leaves or something. I don't even know. Yeah. So there's all the greenery. I gotta you can kind of see because there's also like line detail that's embossed into this. So we got that. And then for the actual little um florals we're going to use first I'm going to wipe off my brush to make sure I don't have any color remaining on it because we'll use white of course and then I'll add I'm going to add a little bit of blue but we'll start with the white first let's get this really good and worked up um Oh, I, I was thinking you were talking about the actual little, like, the ink stand that holds the fresh ink. Um, piece of cardboard. I cut, and I can't even show them, um, places like, I think it's Organize More, I think it's Organize More, that sell, um, like, ink pad holders. They actually sell little inserts that are made of chipboard that you can use to um because they're meant for distress inks because same thing distress ink pads are shorter than your standard ink pad and the Altenew fresh dye inks even though they're circular they are kind of the same size so I cut strips about an inch roughly like an inch by three inches and then I bent them into like little like zigzag shapes and then I shoved them in the back of my ink pad holders and then that bump gives enough space so you could put the smaller ink pads in there. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah I know like, I think Organize More actually sells like chipboard ones that and they're cheap they're like a few dollars or whatever for a pack of them and way less work than cutting down a cardboard box 
to do it myself. So this is going to be like really light right now. I'm going to, but I'm going, going to go back in and make another layer. So anyway, um, yeah, I wouldn't use packing peanuts like you could, but packing peanuts can get like very easily smushed over time. Um, but yeah, cardboard totally works or chipboard. You can just trim it down to the width you need. And then, yeah, you just kind of bend it in little zigzags and it will fit. Um, it'll fit in the back of your ink pad holder. And then that just keeps the ink pads from um, pushing all the way to the back, which is the whole point, so that you don't have to try and dig them out. There we go. Um, so yeah, good. Hopefully that helps. Because yeah, I was really, um, like when Alt New first released, like I forget exactly when that was, but when they first came out with those fresh dyings, I talked about this in another video, I was like, round ink pads, are you serious? Like why? How are we going to sort? Like, oh, I was like, I don't understand. I just didn't get it. And I thought it was kind of like, hmm. And then I got my hands on some of them and I was like, oh, one, I like these inks a lot. I like the formula, I like the colors, everything. But uh, it was when I did that podcast with Bridget at Altenew. It's on the Altenew channel. I posted it on my social media. That came out that last month. I think that came out like a month and a half ago, something. Mm -hmm. But I filmed that podcast with her at the very beginning of the year. I forget. And yeah, I was talking with her about the inks and she was like, oh, they fit in the same like ink holders that will hold distress inks and I was like oh okay sold and then I showed that in a video that I was like oh they're they're roughly the same size as the distress ink pad they're just circular that's the only difference so yeah not near as crazy to store them as I thought they were going to be <laughs> so yeah so these little ones can't really you barely see them on the um, screen but I can see them so I'm just following those little raised edges and I'm not even and I'm not doing it like perfectly either because it just again perfection's overrated And I think the other reason too why I don't find this type of coloring to get as intimidating as I used to is because it's also raised. It just in real life, you know, it's like, oh, that's like, that's cool. You know, if I was to just try and paint this, no, no, that's why I stamp. That's why we make cards. You know, I can't do any of this stuff freehand. That's, that's, uh, that's not my skill set. Yeah. Um, I need to make my Tim Holtz logo. I know, and I still need to do my second, like with the the other thirty six colors, the last thirty six, the rest of the thirty, whatever you want to call it, the the newer release of Distress Watercolor Pencils. I just one literally have not had the time, and two, I still kind of want to do like two new palettes. Because I between the two palettes, that'll have all the colors to have them all in like rainbow order. But that's even more work. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. We'll see what I do. There we go. We can get these all painted. Just like so. Hello to... Everybody just tuning in. The new people. I did forget to uh, remind everyone, like, do the heads up posts that I usually do on all my social media that, you know, I'm going live today. I forgot. So, yeah, apologies. I have five million things on the go. <laughs> it never ends. Okay. There's layer one. I'm real. You could almost just leave it like that. You know, I it's cute. It's 
cute. But I wanted just a little bit of blue. And yeah, I think I'm going with this one. This is um, speckled egg. Is that what it's called? I forget. It's one of the newer colors. Now my brain is like, do you even remember what that color is? Something eggshell. Yeah, speckled egg. My brain stopped, man. I generally know most of the distress colors, like um, the white. Seam. It kind of does, doesn't it, Kath? Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't get more white, but it does look more white because it's that same concept of um, wet cardstock. And like within a desert storm, it looks darker. So like just the moisture evaporating, so it leaves just the white. So it does like show up more. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go in. With just a bit of speckled egg to give these. Just a little hint of blue because Lily of the Valley, some of them do actually have like very, 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 like just a hint of blue. So you can get pink ones, which are really pretty. One of our neighbors grows Lily of the Valley. Yep. Yeah, hers pop up. They're really pretty. She's got, because we got a really shady area. So she's got some Lily of the Valley and some ferns that grow, and they're just, they're just pretty. And yes, most of our snow is gone now. Finally. We're supposed to get snow next week, though. <laughs> yeah. Yay for us. It's April. We always get snow in April. It's just a given. We always get a hint of spring that gets us all like, yeah, um, we're all outside. And we get rid of all our winter gear. And then we get slammed with snow. About mid it happens every year. It sucks. And we hate it. It happens pretty much every year without fail. So yeah, we're supposed to get snow next week. <laughs> and it lasts for like two days. And sometimes it's bad. Like sometimes we will get a full on like blizzard that shuts down absolutely everything. And then three days later, it's gone. Yep. I think it's just like, you know, we just need that reminder. We live in Saskatchewan. The weather sucks half the time. It is what it is. But yeah. Today it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And sunny, a little bit warm. Yeah, not too windy. Either. No, not stupid windy. That's also been part of the issue because we've had some. We get some ridiculous windy days. We do. And the wind, as I get old, triggers my migraines. That's fun, and we live in like the windiest province. Again, thumbs up for that. <laughs> anyway. Uh. I remember you saying at one time you had like eight feet of snow. We did. It, it didn't come down like eight feet worth of snow, but that one huge storm we had whenever that was a couple months ago, yes. um, when they plowed and everything, yeah, some of the drifts were over eight feet. It was, it was complete chaos. Like, things shut down, shut down because of that. Because you literally, we couldn't leave our house. We had a drift in front of our house like we couldn't get out our front door and uh, it was that was fun i couldn't get the mail because yeah the drifts from moving the snow off the streets and stuff were higher than like i literally couldn't crawl over the snowbank because it was yeah about eight feet high <laughs> uh and yeah it's the joys we're used to it around here but it takes about three days yeah, yeah, yeah it did. Get yeah, that one did take about three days. Like, that was... Yeah, because I was live during that one part of it. Yeah. Because, yeah, they had to shut the school down. Yeah. Which almost never happens. But it's like, we you couldn't even get there. It was nuts. Yeah. And then we'll get a hint of spring. And spring lasts here for about two minutes. <laughs> and then we get summer. Which summer is... lasts for about two months. Sort of. Kind of, it depends. Yeah. Sometimes late September is still pretty nice. Yeah, it just depends. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
if I just want to add a teeny bit more. Normally I wouldn't, but I want to add just a smidge more here just to kind of darken this leaf just because I can. I'm going to get rid of that. And that. Yeah, I like that. And I'll just kind of stick in a little bit rather. Yes, that works, you know, and it makes me look like I know what I'm doing. All right, so yeah, wipe my little brush off and we're good to go. We are good to go. So. And it's, there you go. You can kind of see how it's raised. That's, and that's always the hardest thing to show in a video. Like that's where embossing folders are just so much fun is that raised, you know, and I can actually run this through again just to, cause it sometimes does depending on the like amount, cause here, you, there, you can see the detail better on the back. Like, cause that's all here. It's just hard to show in video. You can see some of it. You know, but I can also, this will just fit. Um, it's pretty easy to kind of shimmy it into place. Like it's not going anywhere. It just clicks almost. And then I can run it through again just to re reinforce the embossing. Okay, so let's do that before we add all the splatter. And move my water jar over a bit more so that I do not knock it over. Yes. Yeah. There we go. See? It wasn't so much better. So much better. Love it. Love it. Bossing folders for the win. Okay. I gotta let that. Yeah, it's mostly dry. It's good. We're good. Everything's good. Now we gotta add splatter, of course. Who doesn't want tons of splatter? Um, can you link to do Altenew? Go to the link. Altenew, A-L-T-E-N-E-W, and then gouache, G-O-U-A-C-A-G. G-O-U-A-C-A-G. Altenew gouache. Those two big tubes. My monster tubes. Okay, first let's zoom out. I showed these in the haul video that I posted a couple. Let me, there we go. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Oh, a little too much. Boop. Um, they're huge. They're, ridi they're ridiculous. They're ridiculous. I love it. Lifetime supply. Lifetime supply. Let's test it out. I haven't used it yet. I haven't had a chance. I just got it. Let's add some, let's add some splatter. Um, so we'll do some. Some white, white gouache slices, brand, brand new, brand new. Oh. So we don't need very much. Don't need to squeeze the bottle or the tube very much. Oh, that's going to be a lot. Yep. Yep. There we go. You could also, speaking of gouache, you could use gouache for stuff like this. 100%. Um, I love my Distress Watercolor Pencils. I would almost say, like, what the Distress Watercolor Pencils, especially in a palette form like this, very similar um, effects as gouache. Because gouache, and I talked about this in the haul video, for those that aren't aware, you've got watercolor and you've got acrylic paint. So your watercolor, usually, you know, tubes, pans, whatever, most watercolor is transparent. Um... It depends on like the pigments, the fillers added, whatever. And watercolor is reactive. Like you can re-wet watercolor, reuse it, you know. These these have pigments in them, so that's why they're more opaque. But they are still a watercolor. Hence, like, you know, I can re-wet this over and over and over again. 
I can re-wet this, you know. Acrylic paint is permanent. You know, you paint with it. Once it's dry, it ain't going nowhere. You cannot rework it. You can't re-wet it, etc. Gouache is basically kind of an in-between watercolor and paint. It's a bit more pigmented, you know, but you can water it down. You can rework it. You can re-wet it. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, oh, this, this is just a... You can use tile. I use, sometimes I'll use my glass work surface. I have this link. This is just my little plastic um, art impressions palette that I use to put paints and, and things on for splatter so that when I'm done, I stick it off to the side. So we can add some, some water to it. A tile works too. So we're gonna add some water. Oh, this water's down very easily. I'm gonna add it actually a bit more because I added a little too much water in my opinion. I want it to be a little more opaque. Okay. There we go. So let's add, let's add some splatter. Oh, can't forget. Comes the rules. <laughs> And this will also probably dry back a bit, just FYI. It goes on a little more white, but especially white gouache, depending on how much you water it down as it's drying, because again, all of this color is water reactive. It'll like absorb a little bit, which I'm fine with, you know? So it'll be, it'll be a little more subtle than this when all is said and done, and that's fine. So there's that one. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, he got to it before I did. It's also in the, for those watching live, the, the link, if you guys want to put your name and address in and he'll pick a, he'll pick a winner and I'll mail out the card. That was the other, that was the other housekeeping thing. I did mail out last week's winner and the one from like three weeks, whatever it was. <laughs> I mailed all, any, any of the ones that needed to be mailed out I mailed out earlier this week so those will hopefully show up in the near near ish future okay I'm gonna add a bit of black splatter because why not we're, we're, we're gonna go s subtle and sparingly with this because black splatter can be intense yes and we don't need very much I just I'm just curious I am just curious. <laughs> so that bit of water. Oh, it's black. Okay. Just a bit, not a whole lot. Black splatter usually freaks people out, and I'm just like, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. So we can wash my brush. This is where my big old jar comes in handy. There we go. Hulk high. Oh, that stuff is pigmented. Whoo. Use a little bit of. A little bit of alcohol on my white. I'm gonna clean up some of it too. I don't really care if this palette. This palette's like kind of stained from the black soot distress paint. And now this uh, carbon black gouache is pigmented. It needs shimmer splatter too. Why not? Go big or go home, man. <laughs> um, and I, I linked. Yeah, I linked to this in the supplies. This is the Pick a Fence Studios. Paper splatter, watercolor, liquid white snowflake. And it's just shimmery. Also one of my favorite things. We'll do a couple little, couple little splotchy poos of that. And then we'll do a little, a 
good splatter of this. This one does not show up very much on camera, but in real life, it's so pretty. Okay. Clean off that. Um, I love Chris's love in the background. Oh yeah, he gets it. He gets it. He's part of the, the splatter fam. <laughs> okay. So we got all our splatter. Oh yeah. See, there's the shimmer. Once you... It's there. It's there. You know. It's there. So now we'll just let that dry, which most of it almost is dry, but we'll set that aside. And then for my sentiments, or one of the sentiments so far, where's my, where's my stuff? Where'd it go? Okay. CZ Design, the Scripty Hugs, Wafer Dye. I die cut before I started trying to get better at prepping ahead of time. So I die cut it from white cardstock. And then we're going to. We're going to stack it together as is, um, as is tradition. Yay. Welcome to everybody just tuning in. Okay. My brush is clean. I can get that cloth out of the way. And then I die cut this from just white, white cardstock. And then we're just going to stack these together. Um, could you mix the black gouache with the shimmer to make splatter? You, you kind of can, like in theory. However, when it comes to black and especially like whether, whether it's this black gouache just from this initial use of it, so I can see how pigment it is and like black distress paint, um, it, the pigment, the black pigment in those will overtake anything you add to it. I did that in a video. It might even have been one of my lives. I honestly can't remember, but I just, I remember because I had the shimmer like on my palette and I was like, eh, added the black, like swirled it all together. You couldn't see it in the end. If you added enough, you would have to add a ton. Okay. You could possibly make the black almost look gunmetal. Because, like, the shimmer would... But you would have to add a ton of the shimmer to try and outweigh the black pigment. Because it's both black set distress paint and just from me using this is ridiculously pigmented. So, yeah. It is possible, but you would have to... You would have to use a lot to make it work. Um, I'm glad. That's why I do what I do. One, I like to talk. I like to know things. I like to share that knowledge. There's no gatekeeping here. Okay. We're getting this guy. Yes, I have a video on my channel reviewing the glue press. I posted that a couple months ago. I forget when I posted it, but it's on my channel. And I had been using this for several months before I even posted the review because I really wanted to test it out. And then, yeah, posted that review video. And I do like it. I wouldn't use it otherwise, or I wouldn't show it on my channel. So we got three three layers of um how would I color these flowers with just the watercolor pencils color the flower and go over it with water yes you could do it that way scribble on a palette pick it up with a wet brush you could do it that way or you could do like I've shown in other videos which you could just hold the brush where's my water and then you can just pick it up like that and paint with it. I've sh I did that with the new, the new, new colors that had come out. I don't, I forget what lot. Yeah, I post so much content, but yeah, you can do the exact same thing. Like you can literally 
pick up the color directly from the pencil and paint. That works too. If you don't want to do the palette thing and you want to use them like as is, you can also, yes, color, you know? I just, I don't like doing that. I prefer the palette. So if I didn't have them in the palette, I would just pick it up from the brush. You can try and scribble it on a palette. That kind of works. Sometimes it's a little iffy, but yeah, there's there's definite ways to, to make it work if you don't want to do, um, do the palette. So yeah. Okay, we got our little die cut sentiment. And then I was going to add a companion sentiment. I was going to use this um, Airy Greetings set. Because I thought the hugs. And then I was going to put this one on the inside. Very special to me. And I thought the thinking of you... So the idea with this set technically is you can stamp these solid stamps in whatever color you wanted and then you can stamp the sentiments on top or you can let that dry and then heat emboss, you know, so you could stamp these in black or stamp them in whatever color and then you could heat emboss or just stamp these in a contrasting color like on top and then there are coordinating wafer dies, I think I linked to them, for each of these little shapes which I haven't used yet but I was going to use the think one for that size. So that would help. That was one thing I didn't prep. That's gonna fit in. Do I want it on that one? Yes. Yes. So let's snip those apart real quick. There we go. So we'll use that. The other one I don't need to die cut because I'm gonna stamp it on the inside of the card. So let me move Things out of the way again. Derpy do. I need black cardstock. Where is all my scraps of black cardstock? There we go. Got that. And then um are all the tunnels working up? Yes. I there's a link um below the video and the unpaid intern can put it in the in the chat. I have the link to all of the distress. Simon's got all of them. Um, so yeah, the link is is there. So we got black cardstock. This sentiment, the thinking of you, that's the one I'm gonna use. Um, you'll love it, no clogging. Honestly, mine, my glue, mine clogs all the time. But I said that in my review too. I use Simon's Craft Tacky glue in mine, which is a very thick glue. And mine clogs like all the time, but I don't care. I, 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 I yeah, I don't care. It All my glues, all of my glues for me. And it also doesn't help that more often than not, I leave things sitting out and don't put lids on them. <laughs> so it's like, oops. Okay, got that, got that. I need, I need that and anti-static powder. This is just to help prevent the embossing powder from sticking to anything other than the stamped sentiment. Now tap off that excess, stick him back in there. White embossing powder and then I'm gonna stamp this with clear embossing ink. Oh, I do love when it stamps great. Just just right right off the bat. Let's set that stamp over there. I'll use that in a minute. And then detail white embossing powder. Tap off the excess. Just like so. There we go. Put the lid back on so that I don't knock that over because you know that would suck and then we melt hello to Hawaii Ooh. I bet yeah
25 degrees and sun is all out. Man. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay, I'll come back to that in a second. I want to just, while I have my Missy out, let's stamp the other sentiment that I wanted to use on the inside. We're just gonna line that up. I think I got it straight. Yep. Got that lined up. And then this all... Do you still, do you find that the black cardstock is still a little powdery weight even after you whip it off once it's embossed? I will get back to that. Give me a sec. Um, I need, where it is, my intense black. Um, who does the hugs die? It's a CZ design one. Can you link to the, the hugs, the hugs wafer die? It is good old Kathy Zielski. She makes some of my favorite. Ooh, love that. Um. Favorite word, wafer dies. Okay. So we stamp that onto the inside of the card. Hmm. And now I'm thinking, I wonder. I could technically. Do that. <laughs> Got an idea. Let's do it with a light green. I didn't link to this. Can you go look up Simon Sprout? Sprout. Sprout. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. So we'll use the solid image. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And I'll ink it up with the light green ink. Makes it stand out a bit more. There we go. So we did that. So there's the inside. Um, and then, where'd that wafer die go that I lost? There it is. Okay. Yeah. Anti static powder. It leaves like a white cast on especially dark cardstock and black especially but all i do is i take my trusty little microfiber cloth and you wipe it off and it helps if you use a little bit elbow grease good amount of pressure and i can get it right off so There we go. That's it. It's gone. It's like magic. So then I can use a little coordinating wafer die. And we shall die cut the sentiment. So line that up. Oh, give me a second. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you for this super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So then, where's my, I was like, where are my die cutting plates? My brain just like stopped. All right, we're gonna die cut that little sentiment. Run that through. Get in there, there we go. There we go. I think I used a flower sack. Yeah, yeah, the problem there is and I know, like, some people really hate microfiber, I, and I understand it, but, like, and for some, it's, like, a texture thing. I've been hearing people say that, and I get that. There is a weird, like, they do feel weird. However, that's what makes it work so well, and, like, I use mine all the time. I use it to wipe my brushes off, and it, this is really good at gripping that anti-static powder, because something like this just isn't enough. It, it might still though, yeah. If you use a little more elbow grease, it, it might work. Um, so yeah, but yeah, the my little microfiber cloth really does the trick. 
Hello to Dubai. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Okay, let me put these away so I don't lose all of my my little my little bits and pieces. Okay, let's stick this back in its packaging. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I got like schmutz everywhere. I got my deck of sentiments. I got this little guy. Oh, give me a sec. Thank you, Glenda, for the super chat. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. Oh yeah, those I hate to tell. Yeah, I get it. There's there's a lot of us with like texture issues and things. Like I've I've made no bones about I don't like sticky like sticky residue i was driving myself crazy the video i posted that was last night the video with the neon animal print and i was talking about pixie spray when i was holding my stencils and i had spray like i got it all over like my hands and like my hands were sticky it was driving me insane i don't i don't that that one time i don't want to keep the sticky off my hands yuck okay background is dry we need to trim it down i'm like Run out of space yet again. Okay. So. I'm going to have to take off. Do, do, do. Do, do. Five and a quarter. Yep. Five. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Sort of. We'll figure it out. There we go. So I'm trying this down to about four by five and a quarter. So just slightly smaller than an A2 card front. Okay. Um, you're funny, Kimberly. <laughs> Oh, and hello to Australia. Goodness. Uh, yeah, see? It gives a nice little frame to the the card. We're going to pop this up with my, my trusty big mama foam tape, which it's, we're, it'll be time soon. Soon we shall need um, another one. Oh. I just remember the other thing I was going to add to this. Do I still want to do it? Oh, of course I do. Let's, we'll get back to this. I got other things. I pulled out an oldie but goodie favorite. This is, I've used this in 5 million bajillion videos. The Etch Dragonfly Wafer Die. Still just one of my all-time faves. It's just, it's little and adorable and we love it. So, I got a piece of, there's a scrap of like navy cardstock. This I do know because I checked when I was linking right now, this is sold out. I have shown this in many videos. This is Lawn Fawn's pearlescent vellum. It's beautiful. I love it. Highly recommend it. Everyone needs this in their stash. But yes, as of right now, it is out of stock. They will re they restock it, you know, as as quickly as they can. But I want to use it. This is pretty much what I use it ninety nine percent of the time. Is literally for this specific wafer die or other little like butterfly or dragonfly wafer dies because it's like it's so perfect for their wings so that's what we're gonna do so there was that let me put that over there so we're gonna die cut our little dragonfly because he'll just look super cute on this card i want to be able to fit both at the same time if i'm careful <laughs> See if I can do this in one pass. If not, I'll just re die cut. It's just card suck. Okay, let's do this. Oh. 
happening like man silicone molds resin you're on the wrong channel for that i don't work with resin and i don't make molds that's not what we do we make cards here that's that's what we do there are i'm sure plenty of other um channels out there that do that kind of like resin art stuff okay so we've got the body and then we've got our little wings let me get that wings. Of course, they're caught. There we go. Okay. Um. Oh, hello, Beth. Hello, hello. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to do is take... This is gilding polish. I've had this forever. I think I've, I'm, I may have used it in a previous video. I also have a link. They have many different colors. This is by... Uh, Cosmic Shiver, Shimmer, Cosmic Shimmer, Metallic Gilding Polish. And the thing with these is they actually come with like a little like foam applicator, which I like never, almost never use. The thing you always have to remember with these though, is you need to wash this. If you use it with any foam blending tool, if you're using it with any type of like polish, paste, whatever, you need to wash it out immediately afterwards because otherwise it'll harden and then you're just going to have a little brick that's useless. Anyway. These come in a bunch of different colors, and I thought I would show this because last week's live we were talking about um, like creating shimmery wings for dragonflies, etc. And it just got me thinking even more, and I was like, oh, I have this. And there's other colors, so this would work for it. But what I want to use it on, not the wings, because the wings are already shimmery because of the vellum. But I thought I would add some just to the body. Let's, let's zoom in. Whee! Really close. So you guys can see. There we go. And then <laughs> we're like super zoomed in, but I need to show you guys. So it's just like a, a very pretty pearlescent. And I only need like a tiny bit of this, like barely any. And I'm just going to use my finger. I don't need to use the, the applicator. And then I'll just rub it on to this. A little bit more. And now the body is like just pretty. So you could definitely do that. Let me zoom back out so we're not like right in there. But I like seeing the close up dragon. <laughs> you like seeing the close up dragon? Well, Wings but yeah. Dragon. Yeah, he's wingless at the moment. We're going to give him his wings in a second. We need to ring a bell? <laughs> I was thinking that. I was literally, I was like, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Dragonfly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's a very basic, you can obviously use this for a lot of other things, but it'll, uh, there are many different colors. There was like kind of a minty green blue one that made me think too. I was like, ooh, that would be really pretty on wings. Like if you didn't want to use vellum, you use cardstock and then you could rub this in there and ooh, it would be pretty. It would be very, very pretty. So there we go. So we're going to now adhere our little, our little wings to our little dragonfly. And... Just a smidge of glue is needed, hardly any. Pop that on into place. And pop that one into place. And I've got my little dragonfly and he's super cute. They really are. Aren't they? I love dragonflies so much. Bug angels. They are kind of like little bug angels. I just, I love dragonflies. It always makes my day when they start showing up around here. I've said this before in videos. I love it. Especially the big ones. The big, big ones. Yes. I love them so much. Oh yeah. We've got our little, our pretty little dragonfly. So yeah, I love him. We'll set him aside, let those, let those little wings dry. Now we'll go back to what we were doing to adhere. Um, 
Gonna put the Big Mama foam tape on the back of my emboss panel. Where am I? There, there are my scissors. There we go. So get that onto here. And then, can you post a link to the embossing folder? For those that aren't watching live or even those watching live, this visual supply list is pinned at the top of the chat. It's also linked uh, below the video and it'll open a new window to my website. And I've got like a visual supply list there. It's also got the link and the code for the Distress watercolor pencils. And yeah, it's also, everything is also listed and linked in the description box below the video. Other than a couple items that the unpaid intern has added and I'll add those when we're done, when I sit down to edit all the things. There we go. Um, maybe buy for another card. I know, I love this dragonfly wafer die. It's one of my all time favorites. I have used it in so many videos. I, I couldn't even list how many times I've pulled this out. It's definitely well loved. Yep. I love it. He's cute. And he works with so many things. Okay. Just get that. Get the backing off of this. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Got that. Got my card. It's not upside down. Panels, no, also not upside down. Always a good thing. And then, you know, gotta get you where you belong. There we go. There we go. The die needs its own playlist. Almost, really, but oh, I have so many playlists, I can't keep up. I cannot keep up. There's that. No, I think I'm going to put it up a little higher. I want to put like that. Like that. Oh, that kind of works. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Um, Thank you, Athena. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. This is working. This is working. Okay. We're going to adhere our sentiments just like so. I'm putting it up a little higher just because I don't I don't want to cover all this like I like how that turned out I don't want to cover all my coloring okay got that one and then we will glue our little die cut sentiment do, do, do. in the place you always have to be very very quiet when adding glue during a live, because otherwise you startle the you'll startle the glue or something. Yeah, I don't know. Or Generally, I'm talking about myself. I'll start on myself, and then we're gonna just and if I position it just like that, the O of the of just peeks through. <laughs> I don't know why I like that. I do. I just think it's funny. Uh, we can still read the sentiment. Get that into place. Just like so. Got a bit of glue oozing out. I can just take a little pokey tool. Remove that. We're good. Everything's good. Just like so. And then we'll add our little our little dragonfly buddy. We'll just put a bit of glue on him. Oh, my nose is getting itchy. Oh no. Yep. We'll stick him right there. 
like so. And then last, but certainly not least, we're going to add a bit of bling. So we've got these little, <laughs> little droplet stickers. Because I thought these like iridescent ones. Ooh, these would look. Mm, let's see. Let's. And the local wildlife, pretty much. Yes. Yes. Actually, these sort of like. Yeah. If we add these and the iridescent ones, why not? Let's just. Stick some of those on there. Get where you belong. Yeah, do that. Stick one over there. And then one over here. I don't think we're having it. Let's do some over here. Here we go. Just a little bit of bling. Well, well, let's got to add a bit of glue for that one because I moved him too many times. Great job, Amy. Just add a little dab of glue. And then we can press him in. And while I'm doing this, the unpaid intern can pick a winner. Can I? Yes, you can. Cause I'm done. I did it. That's awesome. This is like, there we go. Here, they they do kind of look like little water droplets, don't they? So yeah, got 3D embossing and watercoloring with distress watercolor pencils, splatter of all sorts. AKA three different kinds of splatter for those that were keeping track. <laughs> and a shimmery little dragonfly. Yeah. There we go. And there's our card. Take a response in my 30 second close walk here. Yep. And while you do that, I'll start cleaning up a little bit so I don't have as much of you. Okay. So. We can go back to this one, and then I can do this, because I still haven't, like, there we go. There we go. There. There we go. So now we'll see how long it takes me to uh, <laughs> knock that off frame or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, clean this out. When you re-emboss things like the green obviously wasn't fully dry so it got in the embossing folder which not a big deal like you just you just wipe it out just because knowing me I'm probably going to use this again like next time I'll use it on like white cardstock or something so wipe that out of the folder it's good to go a you got a winner 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 chicken winner dinner is Glenda Thorne from Oh, Glenda. Glenda Thorne. I will mail this out to you at some point this week. Hopefully. Should. You know. It, it, I'm, I'm trying to get better at mailing things out to people in a, in a decent amount of time. Just depends on, you know, the chaos. So, there we go. One of my much shorter lives then you know usual again like, i don't mind doing the longer ones it's just i got five bajillion other things to do we really do oh so many things so many things thank you to the unpaid intern for helping yep for moderating and linking all all the things it helps it really helps yeah because yes I, I do manage to do lives on my own it's just it's a lot <laughs> Uh, especially doing things where, like painting, you know, where I'm needing to concentrate, it's very hard to pay attention to like the chat and all of, all of the things. So.
So yeah. So fun. Anywho, as always, oh. Uh, what are the storage envelopes you use for your stamp and die sets? I can actually give me one second. I can give you the link to that. Let me, let me link that. Link. If you give me one, my brain like literally stopped doing this. Okay. If I, there we go. Because, yes, I use, they're from Simon Says Stamp, but I just got to pull the link for that. So, um, let's see if I can find it this way. Is that the size I use? Ten. No, that's the bigger ones. I want the slightly smaller ones. 1.5 by 4. No, those are too big. Where's the average size ones, people? Huh. Give me a second, because there's... These ones are 7 by 6. Why are they not showing up? Oh, there might be just wait. A sleeve, maybe? Let me see. Of course it won't. Give me a second, you guys. Um, sometimes trying to search for my links is a pain. A major pain. Okay. Nope. That's not the side. There it is. Yeah, see, it's LB50. There it is. Okay, give me one second. I will be able to give you a link for that. Those ones. Burp. No. Let me get the link this way. This way. Apologies. Okay. Yeah, there's storage sleeves from Simon Says Stamp. There's the link in the chat. They will also be linked with the supplies when I am um when I'm done. But those are the ones I use. There we go. So yeah, I just use the Simon storage sleeves to keep coordinating stamps and dies, etc. So they're great. They're great. And it's like a pack of 50 or something like that. So alrighty. So yeah, I think that was everything. I appreciate, um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, you know, tuning in and yes, the thumbs upping and commenting, it does help. It just, it helps with the algorithms. It's yeah, it's just one of those things with doing this as a job and literally being at the mercy of a bunch of robots. It's because even those of you that are subscribed and tune in regularly, you don't get notifications, everything. It does help. The more you interact with the content you enjoy, it doesn't have to be mine. Um, the more you like, the more you comment, the more you interact. It helps push it out more it helps other people see it people that are already subscribed which you know but then it also helps for you to get the notifications etc too because it's just i'm at their mercy i can't control any of it it's annoying <laughs> but it does help and i appreciate it so thank you all so very much for for tuning in stay tuned i have more videos coming i do plan i i have another video using this embossing folder this uh, Lily of the Valley Arch embossing folder um, coming. I'm not sure if I'll get it up this evening or, you know, in the next few days. We'll see. But yeah, I had more ideas than just this with it. So stay tuned. That'll be coming. And I think, yeah, that's it from me for today. It feels a little weird being done, you know, an hour earlier than it normally is. I'm sure the next live will be like three hours long. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But yeah, on Sundays at um, 2 p.m. Central is when I go live. Uh, I never get the notification. I have my alarm set. Yeah, like the notifications are hit and a miss. You know, again, the more you interact, because like Chris gets the notifications because he interacts like during my lives, you know, because he's posted in the chat and all that stuff. So he gets notification 
the second I go live, his phone goes off. It's it's interesting. But he's like a super fan according to the algorithm. He's he's a super fan anyway cuz you know, he's with me. <laughs> he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> but yeah, it it does I, we noticed that yeah, the more he started participating in these lives and moderating and stuff that the notifications work, but even then even then it's a hit and a miss. So yeah, that's why I try to remind everyone and stay as consistent as, consistent as possible. Um, this is the only thing I'm consistent with, is the lives. Uh, my regular videos are just all over the place, you know. I post them once I'm done editing things, you know. It, it is what it is. But I appreciate all of you so very much. I will get this card mailed out to the, the winner uh, this week. And then like I always do, I'll have the photos... The social media, the blog post will be edited. Everything always is listed and linked in the description box below. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. It's the same disclaimer. All of my links are affiliate links. And that just means if anyone uses my links, you click on a link. You don't have to use a link for every single thing. But if you use one of my links and then you end up placing an order, that just means that I get a little kickback from that order. There's no extra cost to you guys. Like there's no hidden agenda, anything. I just get a little kickback. And that's what helps pay the bills, keeps the garage heater on, it'll <laughs> keep the fan on when summer hits and we do get the crazy hot weather. And I appreciate it. So thank you guys so very much. And I will see you all very soon in the next video.